Welcome to Budget TV, my name is Fabrizio Poli and this episode today is all about the new generation of Gulfstream jets. We're going to be talking about the previous generation and today's generation. We're showing some interesting footage on the aircraft, talking about also the new G700 which is uh, currently going through flight testing. So lots of interesting news here for those of you that like Gulfstream jets or those of you who don't know anything about Gulfstream jets. Hopefully today we will educate you a little bit about these amazing aircraft. Now if you haven't subscribed to Budget TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. All about private aviation and lots more and uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, please comment below we'd love to hear your, your, your comments and suggestions for the future so that's enough on this introduction let's get straight into the new generation of Gulfstream jets off we go So over the last few years, uh, Gulfstream have come out with three new jets, the G500, the 600 and the 700. Now, the purpose of these new aircraft is to replace the previous generation, the, the 450, 550 and the 650. Um, three aircraft that have done very well on the market, very popular. Uh, the 550 in particular have built over 540 of these airplanes flying around today. Um, Gulfstream aircraft do tend to age very well. So even buying an older generation G4 and G5 and refurbishing it, uh, these aircraft can continue flying. Even if you're buying one with 10,000 hours, these things still fly. Uh, and as uh, my, my friend engineer says, uh, Martin Keeping, he says these things are like tanks. <laughs> it's very difficult to, to destroy these things. They're just built really, really solid from an engineering perspective. Uh, remarkable the way they have built these machines. So Gulfstream have been you know, listening to their customers and um, trying to figure out how they could improve uh, and, and develop a new range of aircraft which could do a lot more than the previous uh, type of aircraft. So uh, the G500 and G600 were first um, uh, rolled out and um, in fact uh, there's 92 deliveries uh, will have been completed by the end of this year of the new 500 and 600 since 2018. Uh, now the interesting particularity of these aircraft is the first Gulfstream aircraft with a side stick. So they've gone away with a conventional yoke uh, and they've introduced a side stick. Um, this is um, an active control stick, so unlike what you have on an Airbus or for example Falcon 7X where when one pilot uh, maneuvers one of the side sticks the other pilot can't actually feel that the other pilot is moving or his stick doesn't move. Well, when you're flying conventional aircraft if one pilot is flying and the other one touches the controls the other pilot can feel it. Now the danger of flying like with you know Airbus A320 technology or the technology on the 7X is when one pilot can interfere on the on on the maneuverability of the aircraft and the other pilot can't even tell and this is looking at the instruments that the other guy is interfering. Well, what they did with uh, the Goldstream G500 G600, they introduced this active control stick. So if the other pilot starts to interfere, you can actually feel it on the on the side stick. And this is a really really interesting feature and important feature. Uh, because there have been accidents happen with the fly-by-wire aircraft because uh, the pilot didn't know which pilot was flying the airplane. Um, of course, training comes into it. If uh, one pilot wants to take over from another pilot, he should say, I have control, and the other one should respond by saying, you have control, but sometimes that doesn't always happen. So that's uh, one of the first things that they did. The other thing, as you can see, is they changed the whole avionics system, and they introduced what they call the symmetry flight deck. Um, and as you can see, it's as I like to define it, it's like a series of iPads uh, in the cockpit. Um, and this is designed by pilots. They, they took their top test pilots and they said, OK, guys, we want you to design a really, really um, good cockpit for pilots. It's easy to understand. It's easy to get your head around. It's smart um, and it takes a lot of workload off the pilot. Um, and it's intuitive, etc., etc. So the, the test pilots got together um, and they consulted with other pilots. They came up with a few ideas. They ran all these tests, uh, built these simulators. As while the aircraft, the outside of the aircraft was being designed, they were working on all the avionics and how the cockpit was going to work uh, and, and that. And they've done a fantastic job. I mean, a good friend of mine uh, went over to Gulfstream to actually test fly the simulator and the airplane. And he's been flying the Falcon 7X. Uh, and he said, this airplane, I mean, it's, the avionics are a lot easier to use than that in the, uh, in the easy cockpit that the, the SO have. Um, they've really, really done a, a good job. So, you know, one of the things that... Uh, is important for pilots and with this new technology situation and awareness, especially when things go wrong, uh, pilots tend to have more to, to deal with. And so if you can take workload off the pilot by making the systems a lot easier to use, more comprehensive and, and that, 
uh, which is what Gulfstream have done here, it, it just increases the situation awareness, which then overall increases flight safety. So a uh, great plus there on the cockpit. Now, the other interesting feature that Gulfstream have done here, um, which, you know, their competitors haven't really done, is with the G500, the G600 and the G700, the type rating for the pilot, which means the pilot qualification to fly the airplane, it's the same. There's a slight few differences for each one, but you can actually train on one. And then with a, with a little differences course, you can be qualified on all three aircraft. Now, this does two things. It be, brings down the training cost um, and also the familiarity allows the pilot to transition from one airplane to the next uh, very easily. Now, this didn't happen in the previous generation of golf streams where the 450 and 550 had commonality. But if you were going on to the 650, for example, you needed to do a whole new training course, which lasts at least 30 days. If you take the competition like the so if you're flying uh, the Falcon 900, for example, you want to go to the 7X. It's a whole different type rating, even if the, the easy cockpit is the same. If you take uh, Bombardier, for example, if you're flying the Global 5000 and 6000, you want to go on to Global 7500. It's a completely different type rating. So uh, Goldstream have been very clever here. They've looked at Airbus and the way Airbus did it with the 319 through 2330s and 340s, where they, they introduced this commonality and the type rating. Uh, this is what Air, uh, Goldstream have done with the G500, 600 and 700. So that's really, really good. Uh, G500, 600 Pratt & Whitney engines. Uh, the G500 having a range of 5,300 nautical miles, while the G600 6,600 nautical miles. Uh, price points about 53 to 55 million dollars for the G500. We're talking about 57 to 60 million for the G600. And then we move into the uh, G700. Uh, lots of interesting things here. It's a longer aircraft. It's got more range. I mean, the range is uh, 7,500 nautical miles. Price point about 75 million dollars. The aircraft is currently going through flight testing. They have five aircraft prototypes that they built that are flying around doing all the tests. And during test flying, they brought the aircraft all the way up to um, 54,000 feet and flew right up to 0.99 of the speed of sound, or 99% of the speed of sound, which is really, really interesting. This is a comfortable airplane. Um, it's got Rolls Royce engines, while the G500 and 600 have Pratt and Whitney engines. So they've introduced these Rolls Royce engines to the G700 uh, with a symmetry cockpit. Uh, great aeroplane, can fly New York, Dubai direct, uh, this kind of thing. Um, it's 10 feet longer than the G650. The other interesting feature about the G700, um, there were quite a few complaints uh, from G650 owners that the cabin was quite noisy, in particular after a few hours sitting in the back near the engines, you, you could hear this, this, this kind of uh, noise which could get a bit fastidious after a certain number of hours in the air. So Goldstein realized that this was an issue they had with the G650. So when they went back to the drawing board with the G700, they thought, well, how can we improve this? So what they did is they brought on board some engineers that were working on submarines. So there were submarine engineers and they said, well, what do you do with submarines to reduce the noise? And they took some of these ideas and technology and they built it into the fuselage of the G700, bringing down the noise right down a lot lower than any other Gulfstream and any other aircraft on the market actually, which is really, really interesting. So this is a, an important feature of the G700. As you can see, lovely cabin. Uh, it's a lot wider and also taller than any other private jet on the market right now. So Gulfstream overall here have done a great job. Now question always is with Gulfstream, are you guys gonna go supersonic? You're gonna go hypersonic? And yes, they are looking into these things, but you know, there are other projects on the market that are going to cater for the supersonic and the hypersonic. For the time being, we haven't have, don't have supersonic back yet. But the G700 will be, um, the first aircraft will be entering into service in 2022. Test flying is going really well. It's all on schedule. And as I said, with five aircraft flying around at the moment, doing all the flight testing, they are managing to get this done on time. Um, so it's very interesting. The other feature they have built into the five, G500, 600, 700 is that all their systems communicate with the Gulfstream Central station down in Savannah, Georgia. So if anything does go wrong with the airplane, it's already communicating with the ground. The pilots can get information to see if they can do any troubleshooting or if there's no troubleshooting and the aircraft needs to land. Uh, when the aircraft lands, the engineers on the ground already know what's wrong with the aircraft and already have a solution to fix it. Um, so this will improve dispatch reliability um, and help Gulfstream be even better than what it is. So overall, I must say, you know, a super A plus to Gulfstream for uh, looking at what they currently had listening to the clients, the pilots and everything, and developing a product which is a lot better than the previous generation. And they keep improving and they keep improving. And you know, a lot of the Gulfstream customers that had the 450s and 550s are buying the 500s and 600s. We also see people from flying other types of aircraft, other you know brands of aircraft coming over to fly the Gulfstream, the G500, the 600. 
Um, I also know a number of people that have ordered the 700 uh, coming from, you know, uh, Dassault aircraft or, or Bombardier aircraft. So it, it's certainly one to look into. And, and again, I hope you enjoyed this episode of BizJet TV. And uh, if you want to contact me for a private consultation, please do so. And uh, I always like to hone in and understand more about your business because that's really the only way we can give specific information here on BizJet TV. Uh, here on YouTube, we can only give you general information, but you know, specific information really does require one-to-one. -one. But anyway, give us a thumbs up on this video, comment below, and subscribe to BizJet TV if you haven't done so already. And that's all from Fabrizio Pali on BizJet TV, and I'll see you on the next one.